Early this month, Serbian Prime Minister Anna Brnbic attended the opening ceremony of the Chamber of Chinese Companies in Serbia. In her address during the ceremony, Brnbic stressed the important role the new chamber will play in advancing China and Serbia's partnership. She also said that the trade between Serbia and China is getting stronger, showing the trust of Chinese companies in Serbia. At the ceremony, an exhibition on environmental protection and sustainable development was held. Representatives of Chinese-funded mining company in Serbia attended the exhibition. The company has invested in copper and gold mines in Serbia as part of the efforts under the Belt and Road Corporation. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Nihao Europe. In today's program, we take you to the Serbian city of Bor, which has had a decades-old air pollution problem due to its proximity to one of Europe's largest copper mines. China's mining company, Zijin, acquired the old mine and is working hard to revitalize the old facility. The mine is expected to increase Serbia's copper production share in Europe while meeting the European standard as a green mine. When modern copper mining began to thrive in the early 1900s, the city of Bor developed rapidly thanks to its rich resources. But with time passing by, the outdated equipment and inefficient management hindered the copper mine's development and dragged the mine in the city to the verge of bankruptcy. In 2018, Chinese mining company Zijin invested Serbian copper mining and smelting company RTV Bor, acquiring the majority of its ownership. However, the company still faces tremendous challenges, one of which is pollution. Latina, a small village inhabited by 900 people, has long suffered from industrial pollution due to its proximity to the copper mine until the Chinese mining company came years ago. At Zijin Mining's first meeting with us, we primarily ask them to do their best and provide us with proper living conditions so we will not suffer from pollution, such as industrial emissions and the dirty Bor River, anymore. We received a firm promise from the company that they would build plants for industrial wastewater treatment within two years, and this is already happening. The construction has begun. The factory will process not only industrial wastewater but also household wastewater. Chinese companies are making huge efforts in helping the local economy become greener. According to Serbia Zijin Copper, with the introduction of a treatment system of industrial flue gas, sulfur dioxide emissions can be reduced by more than 90%. A large investment that I must point out is the investment in the smelter and in the desulfurization system, which is already showing results and contributing to air protection and significant reduction of sulfur dioxide emissions. Local authorities also held Serbia Zijin Copper for demonstrating a sense of social responsibility through some of its largest projects, which he thinks are crucial to improving the livelihoods of local residents. From constructing water supply pipelines to building children's parks and more, as with many other aspects of humanitarian responsibility, I think this is the first time in Bor that a company has been committed to its corporate social responsibility in a correct, sincere and direct way. I am very pleased with that. Head of Bor district in eastern Serbia, Stankovic, also gave his take on how Serbia's Zijin copper further improved infrastructure and increased employment for the local community. One of the most important resources is human resources. Regarding Zijin's production capacity, it is necessary for the company to employ more workers. It is normal to have a brain drain. The better thing is that Zijin employs a large number of young workers, not only from Bor, but also from nearby cities in Serbia. In 2020, the then Serbian Minister of Mining and Energy, Alexander Antic, anticipated that the industrial revenue of the country's booming mining sector could account for 4 to 5 percent of its total GDP in less than 10 years. 
Official figures show that the scale of the BRI's involvement in Europe continues to deepen, with Chinese investors and their local partners closely collaborating across a variety of sectors. Chinese companies involved in the BRI have never hesitated to bring state-of-the-art technology to countries that need it the most. The BRI projects are expected to continue to bring enormous positive changes to the continent, benefiting the lives of Europeans for years to come. This is the end of today's program, and we will see you next time on Nihao Europe.